In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add autocomplete to your React Native project. For this video, I'm going to be using Expo version 50.0.4, but this will probably carry over to later versions as well. So let's get started. I should also note that I just used the regular navigation template that they provide through their Expo CLI, and this is how the project looks. And I have also added the component library called React Native Paper for its input component. So with that said, let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is go to the modal file and I'm gonna call this search. So uh, we wanna create a screen which is just dedicated to search. So this is what the modal screen is gonna be repurposed for. We're gonna call it search screen and I'll just say search for right now here, just so that we're on the same page. Then we need to go to the layout components. And for here where it says modal, we need to change this to search because we just renamed the file. And we also need to go into the tabs layout and we need to do the same thing. And what I'm also going to do is instead of using the link here, I'll just use the router from Expo router and then take advantage of this pressable component. So let me import router here and then on press for this pressable component, we're going to say that we want to push to the search screen. And I must have deleted the closing tag here for the pressable component, so I'll just close that up. And then whenever we click on the information icon, it'll take us to that search screen. And while we're here, we're also going to change the name of the font awesome icon to search. So when we go back to the index screen, we have this magnifying glass. So the user, they'll click on this, they'll get taken to the search screen, and now we just need to build out this search screen. But uh, before we do that, I'm gonna go back into the layout file and app, and here where it says that the presentation is modal, I'm gonna say that the header shown is going to be false. And now we are on the search screen and there is no header. So what we can do now is we can just create our own header and our own uh, input at the top of the screen. So that's what we'll do. So first I'm going to import text input from React Native Paper. And then I'm gonna import safe area view from React Native. And I will wrap this component in the safe area view. Then I'll give this a style where the flex is one. All right, now I'm going to have my text input at the top. And for the text input, I'm gonna add some props and the most notable one being the autofocus. So whenever the user comes to the screen, the keyboard will be up and the cursor will be activated on the input. But as you can see right now, it doesn't look so good, so we need to add some padding top to our safe area view. And for that padding top, we're going to import a hook, which is called use safe area insets. And that comes from React Native safe area context. And we can do something like this with it, where we just structure for the top value, and then we call use safe area insets for the style of the safe area view, we say padding top is top. That looks a lot better, but we need to add a back arrow to the left of the text input. So I'll wrap it in a view. And for the view, we'll give it a style where the flex direction is row. And then I'm gonna go to the layout file under tabs, and I'm just going to copy this, and I'll paste it above the text input component. And now we'll need to import these components. And for this, I'm just going to say white. Then we need to change the router method to say back, and we need to change the name from search to chevron left. 
Okay, now we need to align these to the center. So align items is going to have a value of center. Then I'll give this a margin horizontal of 10. Now I'm going to give some styles to the pressable component here. And we'll give it a padding left of 10. And a margin right of 15. Okay, so we can close this view now and then we can create some stateful variables. So what we need to do is import use state from React and use effect from React as well. Now we'll create two stateful variables, one for the search query and one for the search query results. And I'm using TypeScript for this, so I'm going to go to the API, which I'm going to be calling, and I'm going to get a response. I'm going to copy this response, and then I'm going to search for JSON to types. Well, I misspelled that, but it'll come back with something like this, where you can just paste in the JSON, and it will give you types. And really, I only care about the document in this one, so I'm going to copy these two interfaces. Go back into my project, and if you're building a full-blown application, you should probably put this in its own file, in its own separate folder, but I'm just going to put it here, and I'm going to delete these. And here, I'm going to call this search results. Now, for this stateful variable, I'm going to call this a search results array. And then here, I'm going to delete this view. So now, if you try and touch on your screen, the keyboard will not dismiss. So we need to import a component. And that component's called touchable without feedback. And we also need to import keyboard. Now, underneath this view, we need to say touchable without feedback. And then the on press event is going to be keyboard.dismiss. And we actually don't need to do it like that. We can just say keyboard.dismiss. And you have to return a component within this, so I was getting an error there. And now I'm going to give this a style where the flex is 1. And now we can start to build out the different cases where we have a search query and no search results, or vice versa. So let's remove this fragment and we'll replace it with these curly braces. And in this, we'll say, if there is a search query, then we'll render out something here. Otherwise, we need to tell them that they need to um, search for whatever we're offering them. So we'll have some text here. And in it, I've got uh, this, this API. It returns stocks. So I'm going to say search stocks. But in this, we need to see if there are any search results. And if there are not, then we'll say that there are no available stocks or available whatever. Tailor that towards your application. But if they, there are results, then we need to display them in a flat list. So let's put that logic down. So we'll say something like search results.length is equal to 0. Then we want some text. Else, we want to render a flat list. And that just auto imported. But in this text, I'm going to say that um, no stocks matching search. And then for this flat list, we need to first render the data, which will be the search results. Then we need to have the key extractor. And then we need to render an item. And for this, I'm going to create a pressable component. And for right now, 
we'll just have this be some text which reads the ticker. So item.document.ticker for this example. And here on the on press event, we'll say router.push to the value of the ID. In this case, it's the ticker. So I'll say item.document.ticker, but this will be the unique identifier. And I need to prepend this with a slash but this will be the unique identifier uh, for whatever your user is searching for. And now that we have this, we need to go and create a new file, an app, and we'll call this ticker. And in ticker, I'm just gonna copy what we have in index because this is a demo. I'll rename this um, screen so it says ticker screen. And then whenever we navigate to this, we can destructure a hook. So I'm going to get whatever I called the file. That's when it's going to get returned from the hook. And we can use the hook use local search params from Expo Router. And now here, I'm just going to render out the ticker. Now in a real app, this is what you would use to uh, call your database to get whatever data you need to show the user. So just keep that in mind. Now let's go back to search. And now we need to make it so that whenever the user is typing in the text input, the results are actually called from the API and we can display them. So for that, I need to create some functions. So the first one is going to be called get search results. And it's going to be asynchronous. And it's going to take in text. Now, if we don't have any text, then we'll just return an empty array. But if we do have text, we need to call the API. So we need to await fetch, then pass in whatever URL you have here. So for me, that is this. And then we'll pass in whatever the text is. And then we need to return this in JSON form. Now we'll use the use effect hook and it'll be dependent on search query. So every time that the search query state changes, we're going to call a function which will get the search results and store it in the search results array. So let's create that function and I'm going to call it fetch stocks. And within it, we need to set search results to whatever is returned from get search results, passing in the search query. And now here we just need to call fetch stocks. All right, now we need to go to the text input and we need to set the search query whenever the user changes the text. So now when the user types into the text input, they get their results back. And then if they click on a result, they get taken to this ticker page. And this is where you would display all the data that they would want on this screen. But what if they're to click on the enter on the keyboard? We want to handle that as well. So I'll create a function here called handle submit. And this will be asynchronous as well. And it will take in text as well. And now within the function, we'll call get search results passing in that text and if we get something returned then we want to push the user to the screen for the top result so I'm going to say that we want to return here and we'll say router.push
and for me it's going to be stocks sub zero dot document dot ticker and I'm going to specify that this is a um, search result array and if we don't get any stocks well, let's just alert to the user that no results were found Now on the text input, there is a prop called on submit editing, and this will have an event. And within it, uh, let's make this async. Within it, we need to call await handle submit, passing an e dot native event dot text. Now the user, whenever they press the submit on the keyboard they'll get taken to the first option being shown in the results. So at this point, it's just adding styles to whatever was returned and making it look pretty. And here's an example of what it would look like if you were to style it out a bit more. So let's do something like this. And yeah, that's really all that you have to do is you just add styles to it. Also, another thing, if your touchable without feedback isn't really working, that's because you need to add a view and then you need to make that view bigger than what it was. So for me, I added it to be a flex of 0.75. Well, anyways, I hope that this helped and thank you very much for watching.